Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to our service this morning. Whether you are a regular or visiting or listening and joining in on Zoom or listening later in the week. I apologise that I do have a few notices. First of all, a big thank you to everyone who helped with the craft fair yesterday, especially to Elaine Licorice for all the organising she did. And at the moment, it's looking as though just over £700 has come in for BMC Mission Possible. So that's really lovely. Secondly, you may have noticed on your way in, there are all we can envelopes around. And if you would like to make a donation, they'll be there this week and next week. And that's for the Pakistan Floods Emergency Appeal. We have a local arrangement service on the 30th of October. And Martin has put in a notice asking for people to come forward with favourite hymns connected, if possible, with climate change and to be willing to say a little bit or write a little bit about why you've chosen them. Um, after the service today, when you've got your coffee, on one of the tables, you can go and have a talk about it. I will try and join you a few minutes after the service. The other thing I wanted to let everyone know is that sadly, Ian Blakely passed away on Monday. And so he will be in our thoughts and our prayers. So now we'll have a, a few minutes of quiet before I hand over to Neil Jones, who I'm delighted to welcome to BMC to lead our service today. Welcome indeed to worship as we gather together and in our first hymn we affirm what brings us together as God's children of all ages. We sing number 28, Jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer we affirm God's promised presence. Let us worship.
So, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we celebrate as we come to meet you. We thank you for each other, for everyone gathered in worship this morning. We thank you for your worldwide church joining in worship of you as a wave of prayer and worship washes across the world. We thank you, Father, for the gifts that you have given to each one of us and this wonderful world in which we live. For blessed are you, Lord our God, in your love, you created all things out of nothing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for in your love, you shared in our humanity in Jesus, and you redeemed the world. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for in your love you empower your people through the Holy Spirit. We glorify, worship and adore you and rejoice that your praise will last into eternity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to say together a very familiar prayer that we know as the Lord's Prayer. And in various forms, I've been saying that for a very long time. But I want to just look at one particular phrase. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now, when we've wronged somebody and we say sorry to them, we're very happy when they say, yep, okay, it's okay, it's forgiven. But how easy do we find it to forgive others? The story is told of a young boy who had quarreled with his sister. And... The parents said to the boy, well, you know, if your sister died in the night, wouldn't you be sorry if the last thing you'd done is quarrel with them? So the boy went to his sister and said, I've come to forgive you in case you die in the night. But if you don't, I'm going to give you such a thumping in the morning. Well, maybe it's like that sometimes. When people do things to us that we don't like and they're really sorry, do we find it easy to forgive them? Because we're asking God to forgive us. But as we forgive those who sin against us, if we ask God to forgive us, we must be prepared to forgive others. We'll spend, <coughs> we'll spend a moment in quiet now, thinking about anyone we might find it hard to forgive. 
and then we can say the Lord's Prayer together. Spend a moment in quiet. And knowing there are people we need to forgive. And asking God to help us to forgive them. We can say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen. We continue as we sing 363, My Jesus, My Saviour.
Gracious God, you have called us all here to meet you as we move to different activities. We pray that we will all learn more about your love and grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now the readings, please. The first reading is from Psalm 119, starting at verse 105, entitled, Light from the Law of the Lord. Your word is a lamp to guide me and a light for my path. I will keep my solemn promise to obey your just instructions. My sufferings, Lord, are terrible indeed. Keep me alive as you have promised. Accept my prayer of thanks, O Lord, and teach me your commands. I am always ready to risk my life. I have not forgotten your law. Wicked men lay a trap for me, but I have not disobeyed your commands. Your commandments are my eternal possession. They are the joy of my heart. I have decided to obey your laws until the day I die. Our second reading is taken from a let, the second letter to Timothy, starting at chapter 3, verse 14, and finishing at chapter 4, verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learnt and become convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learnt it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed, and this is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in the view of his appearance and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction, for the time will come when people will not put sound to detrain, instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around a great number of teachers and say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of evangelist and discharge the duties of your ministry. The final reading was from, is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as we were handed down to us by those from the first where I were witnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught.
Our thoughts this morning will centre on God's Word in the Bible. And we pick up that theme as we sing number 161, 161. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the truth of your holy word. God's Word in the Bible, taking theme from those words into Timothy, which was one of the lectionary readings for today. The Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that all God's people may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Or you could use the language of the psalmist, that reflected and meditated on God's words. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Something that gives light in a dark world. A dark world where 
We didn't have the street lights that are so common today. And people found their way forward in the dark using very, what we would regard as very inadequate lights. Word of God that guides us and helps us. These are the pictures that people have of Scripture. At the time those words were written in to Timothy, the Scriptures, the accepted Scriptures, were the Hebrew Scriptures what we think of as the Old Testament. And although there was ongoing discussions on which book should be included, it was very similar to the Old Testament that we recognize today. The New Testament as Scripture did not exist. And those introductory words from Luke's Gospel, which I don't think we hear very often, because we very often start to read a chapter 1, verse 5, with the, birth of John, the prediction of the birth of John the Baptist, <coughs> gives us an insight into the way Scripture came to us. So we have a Christian, Theopolis, or maybe someone who is just searching and wondering. And we have Luke, who we know to be a companion of Paul on his journeys, writing to his friend, Theopolis, we know to be someone who was um, quite important. This is called my most excellent Theopolis, which hints at rank or status about Jesus. And Luke has carefully investigated everything from the beginning. It's not something here that's been dictated by God, and Luke is acting just as a letter writer. Luke has carefully investigated. He's talked to people. He's looked at written letters. He's been a companion of Paul. The scholars believe he's almost certainly looked at Mark's Gospel, which was in written form. And he has carefully and painstakingly investigated and collated these stories of Jesus so that Theopolis may know the certainty of the things he has been taught. This is how the Bible has come to us. God's people, down the ages, through the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament, listening, discerning what is God saying to his people, collating the accounts. In the case of Luke, so the one man, Theopolis, may know the certainty of what he has been taught. Perhaps and on the shoulders of people like Luke, who didn't actually probably realize the impact that this would have. Words written for God's people in the Old Testament. Theopolis, write, Luke writing for Theopolis, Paul writing for the young leader Timothy, 
given them the advice that they needed in those circumstances, they realized the impact they would have. And 2,000 years later, I'd be standing in this building talking about it. As people are standing in pulpits across the globe and sitting in Bible studies and fellowship groups and people are sitting reading the Bible in their own time of devotion. An impact beyond what they realized. There's one couple of ways of thinking about the Bible. It's about God revealing his nature and his will to his people. We can read the accounts of God revealing himself and his nature to Abraham and to Moses through the laws of the Old Testament about the way people should live their lives with this desire for morality and justice which the psalmist sought to meditate on. The challenging message of the prophets the Gospels, the letters, God revealing his will to his people through his leaders, his prophets, people like Paul. And there's a record of human response. Obedience, rejection, the human response of the Psalms, the musings of books like Ecclesiastes, good responses and bad responses. And we have a book that's read by so many from those who just read it, to scholars who study it all their lives, who work on the constant work of translation, balancing accuracy and style and the latest scholarship, that we can have it in contemporary English, and they can be translated into various languages across the world. All the skill needed to do that. Your sins are, are like scarlet, but you shall be as white as snow. Trying to translate that verse for a people that don't actually know what snow is. Hmm? They see it sometimes in the hills. We see it sometimes in the winter. But for many people in the world, snow, what's that? When I am just about old enough to remember a very old-fashioned children's hymn, God has given us a book full of stories. Now, the problem with that hymn, which might have been fine in its own way, is that you can say the Bible is just a book full of stories. And it's not. It's a challenging book to read at times. And it's challenging on a number of levels. There's a hint of it in these words in 2 Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, I give you this charge. <coughs> Preach the word. 
Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage. We can expect the Bible to challenge us. It tells us to forgive one another. And we don't always find that easy. It tells us to love our enemies. And we don't find that easy. It challenges us on what we do with our money. The way we live our lives. We can expect the Bible to challenge us. It's a difficult book to read at times. It's set in a very different time to us, ours. I still struggle with some of the Old Testament accounts of conquests of the promised land, of massacres of people. Some of it comes across as being extremely bloodthirsty. And I do find that difficult. We can interpret the Bible in many different ways. 2 Timothy is a case in point. It said that these are words of advice from Paul, the Apostle, we know was a great preacher, we read about him in the Acts, he's written so many other letters, to a young Christian called Timothy. When I was doing my local preacher's training, the textbook I used said quite definitively that Paul could not have written one and two Timothy. And that was a scholarly judgment based on the contents of this book and some of the heresies that it seemed to be referring to. They said, this is far more likely to be something that is from the first or second century. I then picked up another commentary said, oh no, this is undoubtedly written by Paul. So, there's a sincere difference in judgment. And either way, it seems to be from an experienced leader to a young leader. And there's many times in recent years where we have had issues with people understanding Scripture differently. The whole debate about human sexuality and same-sex marriage has been about its base, different understandings of Scripture. And we have tried to learn and work with those differences. But there are some who have concluded that those differences are so fundamental that they can't remain within the Methodist Church. So I do not deny that at times Scripture, the Bible, is a difficult book to read. But I do affirm that with all the difficulties, it is worth wrestling with and studying. But this book was the product of writing over many centuries. It is not a piece of carefully planned religious spin, but books compiled by people like Luke, inspired by their desire to serve God, to record what God has done, and for people to know about it. 
through it we learn about God's love, his values, and above all about what God has done for us in Jesus and Nazareth, and the forgiveness and new life that it's offered. Will we as a people engage with this book? Will we be prepared occasionally for it to rebuke us and challenge us, as well as guide and inspire us? Many different organization, organizations produce reading notes. There's online material produced by different organizations to help us to understand. This book is difficult. It's challenging. It's uncomfortable. But it makes us learn about God's love and his will for us. Teaches, about, teaches us about God's salvation. Will we engage with it and allow us to inspire us and to challenge us? Amen. And we sing again as we sing about the scriptures and what they mean for us. Number 160, powerful in making us wise to salvation. As we sing so much about the scriptures and their work. Let us pray together. Let us pray. Father God, as we read the scriptures, inspire our reading 
that we may learn of you. As we hear your word, And we pray, Father, for your people across the world as they engage with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world in which we live. A world in which there is human compassion, but so much strife. We pray for the country of Pakistan and all those who have suffered in the recent floods. And the work of all we can. We pray for the people of Iran and pray that out of the current difficulties will come increased human freedom. We pray for the relatives of those who've died in the mining accident in Turkey. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country. With our different perceptions, we pray for our political leaders and the difficult decisions that need to be taken. We pray for all those across our land 
who use food banks and we pray for their work for the work of those who care for the homeless Lord in your mercy and we pray for our own community for our church and circuit for your guidance on the decisions we need to take we pray for all involved We pray for this fellowship as we thank you for the life of Ian Blakely. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. And loving God, we bring to you our own needs, our own concerns, our spiritual needs, our financial needs. And we bring to you ourselves. with all our weakness and frailty, but with the gifts that you have given us. As we seek to commit ourselves to serving you, in this world, we offer these, our prayers to you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we receive the offering. And gracious God, we give you these, our gifts of money, and all money given another way as tokens of our thanksgiving and our commitment to you. Amen. And committed to God. We pray for God's blessing and guidance as we seek to serve him, as we sing together, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end.
and as we go to follow our Master and our friend, the love of the Father enfolds us, the wisdom of the Son enlightens us, and the fire of the Spirit inflames us, and the blessing of God, the three in one, will be upon us now and forever. Amen.